Welcome back. This is Marcin Lewandowski and you're watching Adorama TV. There are a range of things that I enjoy on top of photography, but very few of them set my heart racing like internal combustion engine powered machinery, and I thought it would be cool to join these two things. So in this video, I will photograph a motorbike with the help of strobes triggered by radio controllers, and in the following episode, share a little bit about car photography in general. My first love of motorsport came with Speedway when I was very young, so it was nice to find out that someone has one of these one-stroke no-brake steeds in a country that hasn't seen proper speedway since the mid-50s. I start creating photographs like this by searching for locations and making sure they can be accessed without any problems. Simply driving around is often a really good method, but I also ask friends. Maybe someone possibly saw something that may be suitable that can be checked out easily. I look for landscape that can create a fitting backdrop without being a distraction, a background on which the subject can nicely stand out. Once I decide on location, it's time to check how the sun travels around it. Today we had overcast sky creating beautiful, large, soft and even light with enough texture in the clouds to make it look interesting. But the only way to foresee that is to keep an eye on the forecast. Upon arriving on the location, I have another look at the angles and find the one that appeals to me the most. In this case, I really like the idea of almost studio-like environment with just the floor created by nicely trimmed grass and sky as my background. At the beginning, I always go almost full auto. In this case, I check it out at few different apertures, pick my favorite depth of field and switch my manual controls to start tweaking the load of my photograph. This is a good time to introduce the first light. Just like with the exposure, the initial ray of light I unleash from my first SB910 is in auto TTL mode to see how photons spread around your subject. Fortunately, young Noah triggers understand Nikon's ITTL language, so no nasty surprises there. Once I have an indication of the light's behavior, it is time to tweak the power output to get the look I want and modify it a bit to further tune the image. My absolute favorite way for modifying a strobe light on location is the Mighty Rogue Flash Bender Kit, packing a lot of tricks. From pocket soft bulbs, bounce reflectors to gobble, snoot and stackable grid with the option to use color gels for even more variety. And now that I have my two light sources, natural light and the strobe, it is time to possibly add a splash of color here and there from more strobes. Young Noah triggers allow me to separately control the metering mode as well as power output and the zoom of my flash heads on three channels from the transmitter, so there is no need to go and press any buttons directly on the flash heads. Young Nuo offers a reliable way to control light from a distance of up to 100 meters and sync speed of up to 1 8,000th of a second at a fraction of a price of more advanced systems and it's a great way to dip into the world of remote flash photography without reaching too deep into our pockets. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and I'll try to answer them as best as I can. Check out the Lamar Learning Center for more tips and tutorials from a number of other photographers and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. This was Marcin Lewandowski for Adorama TV. See you soon.